my name is Lisa. You might have seen me in many different capacities. Today, I am coming to you to speak about One Million Voices. Thank you. So One Million Voices Citizen Science Initiative, using global people science to support agroecological transitions. Can you hear me all right? Okay, super. Okay, so as Fagas just said, the background is that the idea was dreamed up by Michelle Ebeko from SDC um, one night or one day, who knows, and then officially launched in September 2021 and at UNFSS, supported by SDC. The overall goal of the initiative is threefold, if you will. It is to enable farmers, produce organizations, consumers, and other potential end users to inclusively participate in agriculture movements. That is one side of, of, of the idea. The second side is to really support sustainable adoption of agroecology. And the third side is to contribute to, collect, to the collection, co-creation, and sharing of information to address key knowledge gaps on the performance of agroecology. So the, the core goal of the One Million Voices Citizen Science Initiative is really to develop a tool or a series of tools, citizen science tools. We have different steps in our projects or components, if you will. So the first component really looks at how to jointly identify and define the scope, interest and opportunities for a new citizen science initiative. And I speak again also a little bit about these terms of innovation and new buses. How does it in interact with existing ones? Um, and the thing that is interesting is that we're looking at defining the scope and interest and opportunities in a way that allows the initiative to be both global, but also locally relevant. The second component is then to develop and use the tool to engage at least 1 million voices um, or 1 million people in generating new knowledge in support of agroecology across the globe. Thank you. So just a br brief reminder about what a citizen science actually means. So citizen science is a practice that involves citizens or non-professionals or non-experts. So this is particular non-experts um, that are involved in the production of new scientific knowledge and that the overall aim is to make the world a better place. So really the strong emphasis on using non-scientists or non-professionals, let me say it like that, non-experts, but producing new scientific um, knowledge and it has a strong, um, a strong interest in making the world a better place. So like it has... Um, Ambitions, if you will. Um, another fundamental characteristic is that contribution is usually voluntary. So usually people are not paid to participate. They're not recruited to participate. So money is re rarely, um, if ever at all, um, included in these collective projects. And at the core is really this participatory action for scientific advancement. This is citizen science. Citizen science, yes, is is a part, is, is participatory research, if you will, but it's a very particular type of participatory research. Okay, so summary progress, um, what have we achieved so far? I spoke about the initiative having these two components, right? Uh, on the one hand, the co-creation of scope, interest, and opportunities, and then the development and the use of the tool. So where we are now is that we have conducted a global review of existing agroecology relevant citizen science initiatives. This interacts with what we just heard about P2, but it's not exactly the same because we're looking specifically at citizen science initiatives. Um, and that are relevant for agroecology. Then the second part related to the scope, interests, and opportunities is really building partnerships and exploring together how we can engage people from around the world through dialogues, so through a series of dialogues in, in different regions through these partnerships to first of all understand what a, a regional, what, what citizen science initiatives exist in these different regions. So to complement also the global review of initiatives that we have done. And second, to really engage partners and different stakeholders to understand what the specific interests would be for a new citizen science initiative. Um, and then we are at the moment in the process of really looking at the prioritization. Because as you know, when you co-create and when you have many different people, many different actors in a room expressing different views, how do you bring it all together? So at the moment, we're at this stage, and I'll, I'll speak about some of the results in a minute. Then with regards to the second component about using and developing the tool, um, we learned a lot about citizen science. We are working with knowledge partners um, in Zurich at the Zurich Citizen Science Center, and we're really learning a lot about what citizen science is and what it isn't and what it can do and where its limitations are. So we're really learning also a lot about the technical considerations um, that need to be taken into account and 
when developing or, or adding to existing citizen science tools. Um, and at the same time, also in terms of developing and using the tool, we are preparing for the wide application of the tool, the wide use of the tool by building really explicitly these regional um, partnerships and by making sure that from the onset as the engagement process is ongoing, we are building on how the tool will be used eventually. Um, okay, so some results. Um, in the context of the global review, um, our process involved that initially we had an identification of initiatives through four different streams. There was there a large scale citizen science platforms that exist, so those were reviewed. Then we had a structured um, review of web science, and we had um, we included different initiatives that had been part of or had been mentioned or included by various partners um, in the uh, Million Voices engagement so far. And we also added a fourth stream of data through a simple Google search. Then once we had this general overview of the existing citizen science initiatives, we went through this test of the loops, if you will, to see is it really citizen science? Is it really food system related? And is it relevant to agroecology by trying to map to the agroecology, to the 13 principles of agroecology? So in the end, we included 57 projects in the review database. And the database exists and we can share it. I think it, it is it is ready so far. Um, and in total, we included 57 projects, um, most of which um, are focusing on Europe and North America. Some are global, a few for Asia, a few for Australia, a few for Africa, and a few for Latin America, as you can tell on this slide. In terms of the characteristics, so I, I said that we are learning a lot about how to understand citizen science and what the different elements of citizen science are. And one, one of the things that is important is it, the role of, of citizens, if you will. So what, what do they actually do? And there's a differentiation between data collection and um, data analysis, a very fundamental ones. Are citizens asked to contribute to collecting data or are they asked to help in analysis of data? And what we have found is that a majority of projects, um, so almost 90% of projects, predominantly look at having citizens contribute to collecting data rather than an analyzing. Analyzing a very few and a few do both. In terms of the engagement, so this question of are we looking at like what is the, what is the role of science um, of citizens? Um, do they really co-create the initiative? Do, are they involved in creating the research questions on, based on which the citizen science initiatives are built? And are they included in every step of the process, or are they is is the engagement more limited? And what we are seeing is that a majority, so sixty percent of the initiatives are contributory. So it's really that. This, the initiatives are designed by scientists usually, or by external actors, and then the input is sought from, um, from citizens. So not necessarily a very high degree of co-creation. Um, co-creation, there's collaborative, so that is a step forward, if you will, where citizens are more involved um, in some of the aspects, but not like full co-creation. And full co-creation is still the rarest form, but it's still 16%. In terms of the mapping to the principles, and you know that these things are complicated at times, but in terms of the mapping um, to the agroecological principles, we are seeing that a majority of the tools look at biodiversity, which is something that we know, but it's still, it's still good to see, um, or input reduction, but also a lot actually on social values and diets, something that we've been discussing since, since morning, and the importance of looking at people and systems more holistically. Also quite a bit on participation, connectivity, et cetera, et cetera. In terms of the tools used, we also looked at the nature of the tool, um, because when we hear citizen science, we often think of digital tools, and the majority are digital, but some are digital and analog, and some are just analog, um, which is important, especially in the context of inclusivity of, of such um, initiatives in, in various contexts. And then in terms of the main agroecological focus, if you will, and long conversations about this, but a majority of these initiatives do focus on natural farming elements, um, but um, about a quarter really like strongly focus on social justice, social movement, social mobilization, and 13% focus more on economic secularity, uh, making value chains just, etc. There's so much to talk about, so I'm just like presenting a few things, right? Um, and when, when confronted with it... You need to finish presenting. Oh, is it? Oh my god, is it? Oh, is it? Oh, my God. Okay. Lots of interesting main topics. We, we tried classifying them. You'll see that in the database if you're interested to just make sense of the diversity of different topics that we have. I was not, I did not realize that I was so slow. Okay. Context specificity through regional partnerships. So we, as I said, we developed partnerships in four regions and you can see them on the map specifically. Um, and we engaged through the partners 
with joint protocols that were jointly created, um, engagement conversations about really understanding what exists already, where the interests, and really this important entry point of what is the research question that you're interested in in pursuing through citizen science. And we had various stakeholders um, engaged through our various partners. Um, in, in Latin America, we're working with the McKnight Foundation and this community of practice lead. In West Africa, we work with Groundswell International. In India, we work with our ECRAF team that is also part of our RYSS and, and various engagements in Andhra Pradesh. And in the broader Asian context, Southeast Asia, but also East Asia and South Asia, um, we work with AFA, um, Asian Farmers Association. And different modes of engagement were chosen, but they all followed the same questions and the same outline and different types of stakeholders were engaged in the process. We, we got insights into a lot of additional um, initiatives that exist in the regions. And it, it was really important for us as a team to really understand, okay, globally available information is on what kind of um, initiatives. And you saw that it was very strongly biased towards Northern Western um, published initiatives, but there's a lot of things also happening on the ground. And it was very useful for us to understand also to which degree the organizations that we are working with who are already members organizations um, most of it, most of them are already members of organizations working with a lot of stakeholders on the ground, different organizations on the ground, to really see what has worked for members so far. Um, then the dialogue results, really looking at what are the research questions um, that people are interested in. And as I said, vastly different stakeholders, um, a lot of different phrasings depending on the region, different emphasis on different elements. And we are yet to confirm, I, I said, like the, the results just came in from all different regions because there were some delays in some areas. Um, but what was really important is like the three core areas really that people across the globe who are engaged in the dialogues are interested in is which local ecological practices exist. Second is who is practicing or organizing. So also this question of is it citizen science or is it people science? lots of discussions behind that, and very strong interest in impacts, impacts on livelihoods and climate change adaptation, impacts on the environment, impacts on soil specifically, impact on the quality of the agricultural produce, also specifically with the contact, with the focus on nutrition aspects. Then we had like also strongly represented, but not as strongly, this question of which local scientific methods are being used by people, um, which sustainable business models exist, both in context of ensuring sustainable production, but also looking at shorter and, and, and viable value chains. And then there was also this additional component, if you will, on really documenting climate and climate change effects. Um, in terms of the technology and priorities, a majority of the people who were consulted, of the stakeholders who were consulted, were really interested in having a digital tool. Um, and we discussed at length which kinds of digital tools are being used, in which ways smartphones for pictures, descriptions, voice messages, web information sharing platforms, video clips, etc. There was a strong emphasis on the importance of ensuring that it was accessible in terms of language, but also in terms of how information is packaged, which is part of the reason also why having a, a digital platform is useful, because as you know, like digital platforms allow for this beautiful feature of changing in the language, which is really useful. Um, and then very strong emphasis on the importance of not only inputting data, but also being able to get back data so that we, we ensure also that scientific outputs are available, but also available in understanding uh, understandable format. Um, more elements, but core, core is like in, in establishing a citizen science initiative, starting simple, starting easy, um, and building from there. This is my last slide. Thank you. So the immediate next steps, as I said, we are in the process, in the middle of this joint process with the regional partners of prioritization. We have looked at all the research questions that the different people are interested in at the different elements. We are really in this process of where do we start? There are many different interests. Where do we start? Then finalization of the tool. Um, in line with the core principle of the TPP, really to add value, not to duplicate, we're really working very strongly on making sure that whatever we want to achieve builds on what is there as much as possible. Both, and, and that is why the global review and those regional initiatives are so important for us to understand and if possible to build on an existing tool. And as I said, we're working with the Citizen Science Center in Zurich to really ensure that we know well how it goes. And if we want to build an add um, to the initiative, we um, um, the Citizen Science Center has free tools to do that. And then in terms of popularization, so how do we engage the 1 million people? 
um, we want to have a global launch meeting once the tool is ready. That is like the one component to for the broader reach. But as I said, we really strongly work on working on these with these partnerships, having lo local launches, and really looking for how we can engage the actual members, the actual um, the actual members of citizens. these different pa partners, the actual citizens, people, through through in in the way they already organized, right? Like through through the way they already organized. How can we ensure that we work with them? Um, yes, and then beyond that, build on TPP networks. In the future, we're looking for how we can support application through the partners, but also conduct more science into the effects of the initiative. Thank you.